about to witness the mother of all bombs. At least, that's what the massive Ordnance Air Blast Bomb, or MOAB, has been unofficially christened by its creators. Well, it's, it's tremendously powerful. This particular weapon is the largest conventional weapon ever built in the sense of the amount of explosive being carried. As the largest ever satellite-guided, air-delivered weapon in history, the MOAB is big on firepower. This 30-foot monster weighs more than 21,000 pounds and carries close to 10 tons of H6 explosive. When they were testing it, um, people actually thought they were testing small-scale nuclear devices. Pound for pound, this is less efficient than multiple smaller detonations. But the sheer destructive force of one huge blast, plus the psychological effect of the nuclear-style mushroom cloud, is undeniable. You drop one of these and you can take out uh, a large amount of a target in one big explosion, one big boom. And that's what it does and does very, very well. The psychological impact of the MOAB evolved directly from its 15,000-pound predecessor, the Blue 82. Used extensively in Vietnam, it was nicknamed the Daisy Cutter. The Daisy Cutter's primary mission was obstacle clearing. In the jungles of Vietnam, for quick helipad uh, uh, areas, the Air Force would drop a Daisy Cutter, clear out the jungle area, helicopters could come in. And certainly a, a real weapon for anyone close by when it was dropped. But after that time, the Daisy Cutter evolved into more of a psychological weapon. The MOAB was first tested in full operational mode at Eglin Air Force Base on the 11th of March, 2003, just nine months after development began. It comes right out of the back of a C-130, like what you see here. Basically, the ramp drops, the, there's a platform inside, which is a standard type of a platform. The parachute drops out the back, pulls the platform and the bomb right out the back. The bomb separates from the platform and then falls on its way. Unlike the Daisy Cutter, the MOAB has a guidance system. During its flight of up to three nautical miles, GPS and internal gyroscopes guide the bomb toward the target, where it explodes just before impact. When the fuses hit the ground, the main charge here will go off before it actually hit, impacts the ground. This airburst detonation vastly increases the weapon's destructive range. What we're doing is we're maximizing the blast, the, the shockwave, if you will. What we're not doing is just throwing a lot of debris necessarily up out of the ground. What happens is that an intense fireball is formed. And that's the first effect that you see in the blast, a tremendous fireball. That's followed by a pressure wave. Certainly if they're in close proximity, the pressure wave is enough to be lethal. If they're further away, it may be hearing loss, it may be some other internal organ damage. Despite its massive blast though, it's the MOAB's power as an instrument of psychological warfare that has made it front page news. It's changed the face of battle from the perspective that you don't necessarily have to go in and do precision munitions on a lot of these different areas. You can have the psychological effects. 